this is going to be infinitely better than this. And the reason that it's better is this does not involve your framework life cycle at all until you do that. Computeds are synchronous, right? There are no async computeds. You cannot use an effect like an async computed thing. If you're like, hey, these signals have changed. I'm going to start some asynchronous stuff and then update another signal. That's bad. Don't do that. <laughs> like that's not yeah. what that's not what that's for. Um, don't. And just to be clear, synchronous. The reason synchronous is good is because it's happening all in order. Step one, step two, step three, step four. It's very, very simple. And that's in in our JavaScript. We go from top to bottom. So we right. have this line, then this line, and it's always going to go in order. As soon as you introduce asynchronous. It's going to go crazy. It's going to go. It's going to do something. It's going to come back when it's done. And right. that's where things get a little crazy. And that's not Ben or the Angular team or anybody making it confusing. It's actually confusing because it because you're going all out of order now and people are not lining up like they should. It's just everybody just shoving in and just doing what they want. Not really, yeah. but you know what I mean? That's why it gets confusing because you lose that step one, step two, step three, and you start introducing all of this crazy behavior. Yep. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's one, it's 100%. That's, that's the issue. Like there's, even if, even people that have the thought to themselves, you know what I'd really like is I'd really like an asynchronous computed. You, you don't want an asynchronous computed. That's not what you wanted. <laughs> like you, you, can, okay. you can accomplish that with an event, right? Okay. Here's a question then. So what we want, because you know what happens very often. And so let's just talk about the correct way to do it because the most common thing that we see is CRUD. We need to make an HTTP call. We need to go fetch some stuff from our bucket O data, wherever it is, right. and we need to bring it back. And we need to wait for that to come back. And so if we don't want to introduce asynchronous, right? Well, so what we would do, what I I, I made a demo a couple of weeks ago, just take the HTTP call and then and then do a two signal because because we have the RxJS interop package from right. the Angular team. Yeah. So they have that two signal that uh, Jessica said they created that exactly for that reason. So you take the HTTP call and you and then you send it to a signal and then you're done, right? Right. And then yeah. once the signal gets it, then it's, and, and signals is so easy because basically then once you assign it to a signal, it's gonna update, it's gonna do all its stuff. You don't need to do anything with it. You just yeah. listen. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, I, I, can, uh, I can type up some pseudocode. My Angular is not very good, so. That's okay. Like pseudocode is super helpful for us to, to understand it because when you're talking, and then we can we can like look at it while you're talking us through it. It is super helpful. Even and I think it would be fun because what you said that I think would be really fun is you said like a really bad example of like using signals like computed. Like if you show us like wh what what we're doing wrong and why it's wrong and like this is exactly what I don't want you to do, right? Right. All right. So hold on, let me. Um, because because uh, you're because I I kind of consider you a bit of an outlaw, Ben. But I say that with all the you know affection. Um, and so if anybody's going to come in here and break some shit, it would be you, but we love that about you. <laughs> All right. So you can see, let me bump up the font a little bit because it's kind of small. All right. So if I'm, and this is just a plain TypeScript thing. This isn't like, you're going to see a lot of red squigglies because I'm just making things up. It's okay. But let's, let's say, for example, you have some component and this component, you've got, um, your, I don't know, whatever component. You got some template thing that looks like this. Uh, you've got an input, and your input is got some bound value of like my value, whatever. I don't even remember how to do this negative. That's how bad it is. You realize that? <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It was like brackets, right? Yeah, brackets. Sweet. And then uh, um, this oh. is where the guys in the because the guys in this call with us are writing code like almost every day. So feel free yeah. to help guys. I don't know. I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to pseudocode this and be like, "All right, on input, it's going to call something that's like uh fetch or query fetch or something stupid." All right, cool. Awesome. So there's my thing. And in here we've got this value that's a signal. And we've also got this uh cuz that's what's updating this guy here. And we've got this query fetch thing. So where like in, in this query, this query fetch, like what you don't want to do 
is be like, oh, you know what? Instead of doing query fetch, and this is the most obviously bad example, you're like, no, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. There's going to be like a fetch query effect. It's like, here's an effect. And in this effect, I'm going to read from this value get or whatever to get my value, right? And then I'm going to use that to do a fetch, uh, whatever, some query q equal blah value. And then, uh, then, and then you get the response back and you're like, if response is okay, then uh, whatever out of it, JSON. And we need to, we need to bound it, bind it out. So maybe I'll put like the, here's the results. There's another signal. And it's like an empty array or something for now. We're just gonna say that results set whatever. This results, haha. All right, so here's my pseudocode. Clearly no one would do this. Like, but I'm telling you every single time someone does it, a, a use effect, this is effectively what they're doing. Like every, every single time someone uses an effect, almost always, if they're not accessing the DOM to measure something or whatever, like this is what they're doing. And then like, whatever, they've got some pre is bind out. What did I call it? Results there. Right, and they probably would do that with JSON or whatever, but here we go. So like this is effectively every single time someone uses effect, this is what they're doing. And this is obviously stupid. Like you'd look at this and be like, I would never do this. <laughs> Why would I do this? Because the correct answer is to be like, oh, you know what? Instead of this effect, I should be like on input or whatever, and then fire some like query change event. And then your query changed event is basically this exact same thing, almost query changed, um, whatever, go in here. And instead of getting the value this way, maybe you just get it straight from the event target value, right? And you just get all this same stuff. And you can even use async await now because it's not sitting inside of an effect and so on. Like, like that's, this is going to be infinitely better than this. And the reason that it's better is this does not involve your framework lifecycle at all until you do that. This involves your entire framework lifecycle. Like, hey, let's let's see what we need to render, see what we need to change in order to like get this work done. And does that mean it's actually going to take longer, the second one? I, yeah, I mean, it's probably not perceivably longer, but like the... The, but if you uh, scale it, it will be slower. Yeah, if it scales, like if say if you've got a whole bunch of components and they're all doing this as soon as they start up, like that's the other mistake people do is they're like, oh, my component just loaded. Now that it just loaded, I'm going to use an effect to be like, hey, look, these properties have changed or these these attributes that have been sent through have changed. I'm going to go ahead and and load this data. It's like, no, don't do that. You like, mean we're not, not supposed to load our data on ng on init? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I see so it's... many people using the ng on init lifecycle hook to fetch their data. And it's yeah, really yeah. Cool. I mean, it's that's and still it better works. than doing it in effect, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, to be honest. But so, it's the same idea. Like you're 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 making it slower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's some at some level you are going to have to use the ng on init to load some data, right? Like even if it's just the very top level, but like that's not that awful. Like that's a fairly normal kind of hacky way to do things. But but if you fetch it before you even get to ng on init and have it ready and waiting, it's going to be faster. Right. Like if it's yeah. if you already have it fetched, it's going to be faster. Um, and you know that's the and and it, this this problem this effect problem is like ten times worse in React. Ten times because uh, you you end up using these hooks and every hook that you use like. When you call your render function, it's got to go through and process this hook, and it's much, much worse. But um, yeah, don't don't do this. Do this. Like, and I know this is the simplest possible example, but I'm telling you factually, if in your effect you're not measuring the DOM or you know doing some weird, super weird edge casey thing, like you're probably using it wrong. You probably shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. I mean, it's it's a good explanation.